Hello everyone. Our today's topic is effect of precipitation on the EMF of half cells. Earlier we have discussed the effect of um, effect of pH in two cases and also the effect of formation of complex on the EMF of half cell reactions. And our today's topic is uh, the effect of change in concentration due to precipitation on EMF. So the, this effect is actually due to the change in concentration of the oxidized and the reduced forms. That means the oxidant and the reductant concentrations. The concentration change, okay, and it is it is due to the formation of precipitation, formation of precipitates. Now, uh, in this regard, we shall take two half cell reactions. One is the cupric cupress system, which has the redox potential of plus 0.15 volt. And the next one is the iodide, uh, iodine iodide system, which has the redox potential of plus 0.54 volt. So, we iodine iodide system has the greater redox potential. So, it is expected that iodine should oxidize cuprous ion into cupric ion. But in reality, this does not take place. And this is due to the low solubility of cuprous iodide, iodide uh, uh, in the solution. Actually, cuprous iodide, CuI, precipitates out of the solution and due to that the concentration of the Cu plus ion uh, drastically uh, falls and this effect uh, uh, affect the E0 value of the Nernst in the Nernst equation. How? In reality what happens? In reality what happens is the uh, other reaction where iodide ion this iodide ion okay is oxidized by cupric ion and cui is precipitated out and iodine is liberated actually this reaction is very much a prominent reaction and this reaction is utilized in chemistry practicals when uh, copper is estimated quantitatively okay this is explained by the solubility product of cuprous iodide how let's look the solubility product of CuI is 10 to the power minus 12. Now, here the cuprous ion concentration can be uh, can be fixed as 10 to the power minus 12 by iodine iodide ion concentration. So this is the actual actual concentration of cuprous ion in the solution, and this concentration is 10 to the power minus 12 by iodide ion concentration. Now this value will replace the Cu plus ion concentration in the Nernst equation. What is the Nernst equation? The Nernst equation of the cupric cupress system is this E equal to E0 plus 0 0.0591 log cupric ion concentration by cupress ion concentration. Here cupric ion is the oxidant, cupress ion is the reductant and 0 0.0591 at 25 degrees Celsius and there is divided by 1 for 1 electron consumption and here you find that there is concentration of Cu plus ion and the concentration of what is the concentration of Cu plus ion? This is 10 to the power minus 12 by iodide ion concentration. So this value will replace will be replaced here. What we shall find? We shall find here that the iodide ion concentration goes to the numerator and in the denominator there remains 10 to the power minus 12. This 10 to the power minus 12 part is taken out or analyzed out from this overall logarithmic form and we shall merge it with this E0 value to get the new formal potential or the E0 dash value. So, what is the exact E0 value? E0 exact E0 value is 0 0.15 volt. But E0 value is being merged with this part due to this 10 to the power minus 12, log 10 to the power minus 12. Okay. So, we are getting a new redox potential. This is the formal potential, which is plus 0 0.86, which is now greater than that of the iodine iodide system, which is plus 0 0.54. Now, it is now capable to oxidize the iodide ion to liberate iodine. So, the effective potential 
thus rises above the reduction potential of iodine iodide system which is plus 0.54 volt and the iodide is oxidized by cupric ion in the solution resulting in this reaction where cupric ion oxidizes iodide to liberate equivalent amount of iodine and this iodine is uh, estimated with the help of sodium thiosulfate and starch in the practicals and this is extensively used. So the extremely low solubility of the cuprous iodide decreases the concentration of the cuprous ion in such a manner that the electrode potential is substantially increased. This way copper may be estimated by titrating the liberated iodine with a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate. But now uh, this type of effect of precipitation uh, we have another example in case of ferrocyanide ferricyanide system. Let us see. Look, the ferrocyanide ferricyanide system which has the redox potential plus 0 0.36 volt. So, this is again lower than plus 0 0.5 volt. But if zinc is introduced, Zn2 plus ion is introduced into the solution of ferrocyanide ferricyanide, then it will be precipitated out as K2 Zn3 efficiency hold wise. That means potassium zinc ferrocyanide. Okay. Now, uh, this since the concentration of ferrocyanide ion decreases, this will affect the E0 value in the Nernst equation. And this will again become greater than that of the iodine iodide system redox potential, which is plus 0.54 volt. And similarly, iodine is again liberated and it is estimated uh, uh, quantitatively. And this way, this phenomena is utilized in estimation of zinc ion in the solution quantitatively. So, these two are the effects of examples of effects of precipitation on EMF of the half cells. Okay. So, that is all for today. Goodbye.